a lecture about the velocity and acceleration notes. And before we go outside and run the 40 yard dash, I want you to have all these notes down so you can stop the recording and just write everything down and I'll go through and explain it all for you. Um, this is also going to be the first page of the test where you have to fill in blanks with the different uh, colored words you got here. So first thing I want you to know is the difference between scalar quantities and vector quantities. Scalar quantities just have numbers. For instance, if I was going to say 43 miles or 50 miles per hour, notice it's just a number there. It doesn't tell you a direction. Where the next green line down is vector quantities. They both explain magnitude and direction. So magnitude is like a number like 43 miles, and then the direction would be which way you're going, like north. You could also say 50 miles per hour south. All those would be vector quantities. So there's two types of scalar quantities I want you to know. One's called distance. Distance is just how much you change the position of an object. For instance, I could go and change it 10 meters. I could move something three centimeters. Those are all distances. Another scalar quantity would be speed. For instance, in your car, you go you know, 20 miles an hour, or on a bike, you might go 10 meters per second. You just give it a number, and it tells you the units there at which you uh, covered that distance. Vector quantities, though, have to have a direction. So the same thing as distance is called displacement. You can see this down here a little bit. Displacement, though, not only does it include the number that you went, so for instance, 10 meters, it also includes the direction, like north. So 10 meters north would be displacement, but 10 meters would be distance. Velocity is the same thing as speed, but it includes a direction. So for instance, instead of saying 10 meters per second, you might say 10 meters per second south, or five miles per hour south, something like that. So pretty easy, just the fact that vectors have direction and um, distance, I'm sorry, Scalar quantities do not. Acceleration gets a little bit more challenging. Acceleration doesn't really tell you how fast you're going. It tells you how fast you speed up, slow down, or change direction. So for instance, if I said you were speeding up 10 meters per second every second, that means let's say you started at zero. Okay? At zero seconds, you'd be going zero. After one second, you would speed up to 10 meters per second. After two seconds, you'd speed up to 20 meters per second. So once again, it doesn't tell you how fast you're going. It just tells you how fast you're changing that speed. Um, another uh, different unit for it might be miles per hour per second. So if you were accelerating at 20 miles per hour every second, after one second, you'd be going 20. After two seconds, you'd be going 40. After three seconds, you'd be going 60 and so forth. So there's actually three ways you can accelerate. You can speed up, you can slow down, or you can simply change direction. So every time you turn, you're actually accelerating. And we're going to get ready to go out to class and run a 40 yard dash. So I'm going to have about three or four people run a 40 yard dash. And from those people, I'm going to want you to do three different calculations. One's going to be for average velocity, which just tells you how fast are they going for the whole race. Okay? Then I'm going to want you instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity tells you exactly how fast are you going at any split second in time. So right now, how fast are you going? And the acceleration, once again, is how fast you're actually speeding up. So I'm going to give you three different uh, calculations here I'm going to want you to write down. So take the notes on how to do it, and then uh, when we get outside and get to the data, you can actually do all of these for one runner. You're going to do it for one runner when you do this. So let's start with the calculations for average velocity, or we call average speed. Average speed just tells you how fast were you averaging for the whole race. So I'm going to use a, a letter V for velocity. So whenever you see me write a V, it's going to be for velocity. You could also say it's speed. Okay? And the way you get velocity is the rate at which speed uh, distance changes. So rate means time. So I'm going to take distance divided by time. I don't want to write down these words all the time, so I'm just simply going to uh, abbreviate them using letters of D divided by T. And so you're going to write that uh, formula down, V equals D over T. You're going to write that down eight times because you're going to have the five-yard line, the 10-yard line, the 15-yard line, and so forth. So let me just write this real quick. I have V at the five-yard line equals distance divided by time. And I want to know my average velocity. And often we uh, put a little bar over the, the letter when we want averages. So I'm going to have the average velocity at the five yard line. That's what that little five down here means. And so my distance would be five yards. My time, T 
you look right up here, the time at the five yard line was 1.19 seconds. And so if you take five and divide it by 1.19, you end up getting uh, 4.2 yards per second. Uh, yards at the Y, D instead of Y. It looks like a four, so this is yards per second. So then you keep going to the next yard line. The next yard line would be the velocity at the 10 yard line. So I'm going to put D equals D over T. I'm going to put 10 yards divided by the next time. Well, the next time is 1.84. And so 10 yards divided by 1.84 ends up giving you uh, 5.43 yards per second. And so if you notice, his average velocity is going up. So he's actually speeding up a little bit here. And then you're going to do the same thing for the 15 yard line. So I'm going to take V equals D divided by T. Once again, my distance was 15 yards. The time at the 15 was 2.72. I'm going to divide that by 2.72 seconds. 15 divided by 2.72 ends up giving you somewhere around 5.5. And he's still speeding up a little bit here, or she is. So that is average velocities at every yard line. You'll just keep going on and on. Uh, instantaneous velocity is going to be a little bit more challenging because this isn't what you're averaging. Instantaneous velocity tells you how fast are you going at a given instant. So I'm going to do it. We're going to figure out what's the speed between these two times. Or what's the difference between... Uh, these two times, what's the difference between these two times, and so forth. So watch what I do here. The formula looks a little teeny bit different. I'm still going to say that V equals distance divided by time, but now it's the change in distance. So change in distance is going to look a little bit different. And on the bottom, it's going to be the change in time. Well, I don't want to have to write all that out every time. So the, oh, that's change in time, guys. And so the word change in, the way we do this in math class is we use a triangle or a delta sign. So if I put down triangle D, that means delta D or change in distance. If I put a triangle T or a delta T, that means change in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out how much the distance was changing and how much the time was changing. Well, the way you get change in distance is you take what we call the final distance minus the beginning distance. But instead of beginning, I'm going to use the word initial. Okay. So it's going to look like this. Initial distance. And down here, I'm going to have final time minus initial time. Well, I don't want to have to write all those big words out all the time. So I'm going to change that to an abbreviated form. And so my instantaneous velocity, the five yard line, is going to look like this. Distance with a little subscript F, that means sub F, means final distance, minus initial distance, divided by final time, minus initial time. So let's do this at the five yard line. Well, my final distance at the five yard line is going to be five, so I'm going to put a five in there. My initial distance between the zero and the five, in fact, I'm going to even change this a little bit so where it says the velocity between the zero up to the five yard line. Okay, so that's zero arrow five means from the zero to the five yard line. So my final distance is going to be five yards. My initial distance is going to be zero yards because that's where I started. Now let's look at your times. If you come back up here to the chart, my initial time was 1.19. So I'm going to put in my final time between the 0 and the 5 was 1.19. My initial time was at the beginning of the race, which was 0. So if you notice, I'm going to get the same exact answer as I did when I did average velocities, and that was the 4.2. Once again, it'll be yards per second. Now, when you do the next one, it's going to be a little bit different. You're still going to use the same formula, but now I'm going to do it from the 5 up to the 10-yard line. So I'm going to still have DF minus DI. You're going to write that down every time at every yard line. Divided by TF minus TI. My parentheses are getting a little dirty here. Sorry about that. 
let's talk about this. Your final distance from the uh, five to the 10 yard line, the final distance would be the 10. The initial distance between the five and the 10 yard would be five, not zero, because you started at the five yard line instead. My final time between the five and the 10 would be 1.84. And my initial time would be happening at the five yard line, which is 1.19. So you gotta make sure you put in these parentheses when you put it in your calculator. So now we get an answer of 7.69 yards per second. It went way, way up. So this guy's really, really speeding up a lot between the five and the 10 yard line. Now you do the exact same thing between the uh, 10 and the 15. So once again, I'm gonna take the, um, Velocity go between the 10 and 15. Put down my formula, DF minus DI. If you really want to, you can just simply put down the triangle T. It means the same exact thing. Sorry about the bad parentheses here. So my final distance would now be 15 because it's between the 10 and the 15 yard line. The initial distance would be the 10. My final time is going to be the time at the 15 yard line, which is 2.72. My uh, initial time is going to be the 1.84 because it's the time at the 10 yard line. And then you put all your parentheses in the calculator. And now you get an answer of 5.68 yards per second. If you notice, the person slowed down during the third section of this race. He was going 7.69 yards per second between the uh, 5 and the 10. Between the 10 and the 15, he now only went. 5.68. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means in just a second as far as acceleration. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is the acceleration notes. Uh, acceleration is a little bit different than velocity. It's how fast you're changing velocity. So my acceleration is the same thing as my change in velocity or the rate of change in velocity. So it's going to equal the change in velocity divided by the change in time. And once again, if I want, I can simply use those delta symbols. And so I'm going to have delta V, or triangle V over triangle T. Same thing as before. Instead of using the triangles, I'm going to take the final distance, my, I'm sorry, final velocity minus initial velocity. So A is now equal to the final velocity. minus the initial velocity. So that's the same thing as triangle. That's what all this means. But it's all written out real, real long. I hate that. And this would be final time minus the initial time. So if you want to write that in a lot shorter way, you can either do triangle V or triangle T or final velocity V sub F minus V sub I divided by T sub F, that means that sub means subscript, minus T sub I, which means initial time. So let's do three examples of your homework right here. I'm going to do acceleration from the zero up to the five yard line. So I'm going to take V sub F minus V sub I. You're going to write that formula down every time. That way you got it memorized for the test divided by T sub F minus T sub I. Now what I need to know is I need to know my final velocity at the five yard line. We're going to have to go back up to your pro, uh, previous homework here. So if I go all the way up here to the green, if you notice at the five yard line, my velocity was 4.2. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put in a 4.2 in for final velocity. At the zero yard line, I wasn't going any speed at all, so I'm going to put on zero there. This is, once again, yards per second. I'm going to divide that by the time that I had at the five, because the final time between the zero and the five, if you look back up here at your chart, your final time was 1.19. So I'm going to put in 1.19. Probably getting dizzy with all this going back and forth. My beginning time at between the zero and the five was zero. And so now, I'm simply divide those two numbers. 
and you will end up getting 3.52. You, you can round that up to 3.53 since it's a, it's a 9. So 3.53 yards per second per second. So that means every second you sped up 3.53 yards per second. Now we have a quicker way to write that, and that's 3.53 yards per second squared is how we normally write that. All right, let's continue on and do the next one here. If I want to do the acceleration between the five up to the 10, same exact formula again, VF minus VI over TF minus TI. You can use the triangles if you want. But now I got to come back up here. I got to find my final velocity at the 10 yard line. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, the 10 yard line. So I come back up here. At the 10 yard line, my final velocity was 7.69. I don't know what just happened there, but I stopped, my computer stopped writing. That's things. Okay, everybody, I want to apologize because the smart board has stopped uh, working as far as letting me draw. So I can't go back down either. So anyway, I'm going to probably have to end this recording and save it, and then I'll finish the notes up in class. But what you're going to have to do is you're going to, have to go back up and find your velocity at the 10-yard uh, line, which was 7.69. That's going to go in for final velocity. You then subtract from that the velocity at the 5-yard line, which was 4.2. So I'm going to take the 7.69 you see over here on the, on the right, subtract from that 4.2. And then what I have to do is we have to divide that by the change in times. Now, the change in times are going to be direct, exactly like you see what I'm pointing to right down here, the 1.84 and the 1.19. So it'll be the 7.69 minus the 4.2. You're going to get that answer. And divide that by the 1.84 minus the 1.19. And you will end up getting an answer of 28.8 yards per second per second. Now, that's a phenomenal acceleration. So we'll talk about when we look at the videos what this person did. But that means they're speeding up 28.8 yards per second each second. Boy, if they could keep that up, they'd be going as fast as a car, but eventually that doesn't happen. Um, when you do the, set, the, the third set down, I want to let you know that you're going to take the, um, the same exact formula. You're going to have velocity final, but your velocity final this time is going to be the 5.68. And when you subtract 5.68 minus 7.69, you're going to get a negative number. Well, a negative acceleration means you slow down. So that's what happens is we get a little tired. So our acceleration was 28.8 at, uh, at the 10 yard line. When you get to the five, 15 yard line, it's now gonna be a negative number because we're slowing down. And um, that negative number is completely fine. Okay, sorry, I couldn't finish up the notes. We'll do that in class, um, but go ahead and we'll save it here.